Welcome to Do You Wanna Dance with Sophia in Sapphire. Learn how simple it is to go from wallflower dreamer to confident center of the stage dancer. Whether it's the first dance as husband and wife or another option for date night, we'll help you go from nerdy to flirty, jumpstarting your dancing journey and transforming your experience into a personal expression of what makes you, you. And now, your host for Do You Wanna Dance, Sophia in Sapphire. Welcome to the Do You Wanna Dance radio show. I'm your host, Sophia, and you're listening live on VegasAllNetRadio.com. This show is about inspiring you, helping you get out there, jump-starting your dancing journey, making the most out of your first dance experience. We have tips and tricks to show you how to get from nerdy to flirty, and today using the secret weapon of NLP. We will find out what you can say during the moment of truth when you ask someone to dance, and also how to get along with everyone you meet. So the key to success is communication, and we'll be talking more about that today. We will have NLP expert Don Elizabeth She'll be joining us shortly with more info on this. If you missed a show, please visit our website, sophiainsapphire.com, to have access to archives and downloads. Like Sophia in Sapphire on Facebook to be personally invited to Sophia in Sapphire classes, events, and meetups. Co-hosting with me today is Magic Al Jensen. Welcome to the show. Hello, Sophia. Great to be with you on a warm Wednesday in Las Vegas. It is pretty warm. Ah, uh, yes, it's summertime. Well, it's not officially summertime. That comes, uh, what, like another week or so, I think. Another six days. But next time we're on the air, it'll be summer. Is that so? Yeah, it's almost the 21st of June. Hmm. Summer solstice. That's worth dancing about. That's worth celebrating yeah, that and is. dancing about. That's right. Our, the Native Americans used to uh, celebrate summer solstice with uh, a very special dance. Tell me more. I used to know it, but uh, when I, back when I was a kid and going through, I don't know, like Scouts or 4-H or whatever, they, they told us all about that, and I learned all about it. But, I mean, that was like ages ago. That was like long before you were even born. So, I mean, I've forgotten that since then. But I, I remember the Native Americans used to celebrate summer solstice with a dance. I'll have to look into that. Yeah, check it out. Okay. So last week's show was awesome. We had um, a special guest, psychotherapist Ross Rosenberg. That guy was deep. I he mean, was. in fact, you know, I, I think that I'm uh, sensing a little bit of a theme here. I mean, he was a, a psychologist and uh, we've got somebody today that's going to be talking about uh, neuro linguistic programming. And then next week we have a very special uh, guest coming to us from Boulder, Colorado, who's going to be speaking about body language. So I'm kind of sensing a little bit of a theme here. It's true. Well, you know, this is the stuff... Um not many people talk about when you think about dance it's pretty simple you hold somebody's hands and you move to music it's, but it's very psychological it goes on deeper levels um when you connect with someone uh there's emotions there's uh you know physical there's you know sound what you hear um and there's effective communication and uh ross, all of ta these ross things, talked a lot about that yeah, a lot of these things uh, convey the deeper levels of the benefits of dance, its medicinal qualities, and also how to better the quality of your life. And these resources are for you out there, my listeners. You know, we're trying to jam-pack um, our episodes with quality information that can be implemented into your lives today. And um, for you to start learning what what it is, how to get what it is that you want and primarily what that really is is experiencing the god-given joy of life that's and right i mean dance is deep i mean yeah. on the surface it, it sometimes just looks like people standing around moving in crazy you know ways but it's a lot deeper than that it's uh there is a psychological root to it it helps you to understand your own personality a little bit better and more importantly than that even how we relate with other people is really demonstrated in how we uh, how we take uh, how seriously we take dance yeah well so through dance, you're forced to learn another person's language. I mean, it is a temporary relationship, partnership on the dance floor. You're forced to communicate effectively 
or it doesn't work. Exactly. And that's one thing Ross Rosenberg was talking about that, um, you know, uh, especially beginner dancers, they kind of take over and the leader thinks, hey, I did this. Why didn't you follow? But, you know, the lack of listening and the, the lack of awareness and the lack of understanding how somebody else communicates really puts him in a position of uh, not not advantageous. Exactly, that it's okay to be a leader, but you also have to be open to the signals that your partner is giving you and allow your partner the opportunity to express themselves. So you're not being so narcissistic that you can't exactly. keep your, your mind open to the signals that your dance partner is sending you. Yeah, and the cool thing is uh, with dance, you're forced to... Uh, take ownership of your intentions and actions. And um, every mo movement has a consequence. So there's no uh, sneaking out of something, you know, or, you know, how sometimes we slip up or say the wrong thing and we, it's easy to twist and say, oh, no, but that wasn't what I really meant. Uh -huh. But in dance, there's no hiding. There is no hiding. I, I learned that very, very well <laughs> this last Monday night. Oh, that's true. You came for the very first time to our meetup. I came to meet up, and I don't know if now's the time to talk about that, but yes, uh, please. But we probably need to talk. I learned a lot about uh, dance and a lot about communication. And you're very right. You cannot hide your intentions. You cannot hide behind your words because your physical actions. That's that's all you have. And if I don't provide the proper leadership for my partner, then you know, they can be confused and they have no idea what it is that I'm asking of them or kind of leading or directing or inviting them to do. And I was, I was so focused on what I was supposed to do. And then you would be talking about this is how the lady gets into a <laughs> twist or gets into a turn. And this yeah. is how she gets out of it. And I'm thinking about that and forgetting about my moves. Right, I'm exactly. thinking about what she's supposed to be doing and not focusing on what I'm supposed to be doing. And it was, uh, it was an awesome experience, but I realized I have to, you know, let the lady do what it is that she needs to do and allow her the freedom to do that. It's my job to kind of cue and invite her to go in a particular direction to make a particular step or move. But then, you know, I'm not responsible for her doing that. I just have to create the environment and yeah, allow the her, invi invite her and allow her to do that. Yeah. And so one thing or several things that you experienced is, um, how much responsibility you have as a leader because a lot of times all we think is we need to know moves and then that's it but there's so much multitasking going on and oh ladies, my goodness ladies oh. often uh, are very critical and quick to judge uh, the guys yes you know uh, they don't realize that they're taking care of you they're taking care of themselves they're listening to the music they're checking out if anyone's running into you mm -hmm. and then they're remembering when is the proper time to lift their arm for the lead because yep. that's not actually the moment that she's supposed to go but it's like the prior moment exactly so um uh great job out there i was pretty impressed al you were one of the guys that picked up the quickest oh my and goodness i do not know why maybe you're hiding something that you've <laughs> danced before but uh it was truly a pleasure to have you in class well thank you i have never uh, taken uh, East Coast swing lessons before. I have danced before and years and years and years ago I've taken uh, lessons for like the waltz and the foxtrot and, and things of that nature and then you, you have to remember I grew up in the disco era yeah. so I was, a, I was a disco fiend back in the 1970s but uh, that was uh, years and uh, you know 150 pounds ago. Huh. Yes. So yeah. thing, things and times have changed. So, but tell me, did you experience some endorphins? Did you enjoy yourself? Oh my God, yes. I mean, absolutely. Um, the, you know, what you talk about, the opportunity to, to get close to another person, you know, you're holding their hands, you're holding their shoulder, you're holding right. their waist. So yes, you are. Uh, you're being intimate with those, uh, with your dance partner for a period of time while you are dancing. And I love the way that you had us rotate. I mean, I danced with every lady that was there, you know, three, four, maybe five times over the course of the evening. And uh, delightful people, delightful instruction. And I came away from there, yeah, with, uh, with a rush. I didn't, at the time, I didn't realize, but later on, uh, because of my lack of normal physical activity, I was sore after that. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's good to hear. It's like, oh, my God, I've been to the gym. You know, my yeah. body thinks that I was at the gym. So. Well, yeah, exercise is definitely one of the benefits. But uh, like I've mentioned 
uh, before the primary benefit is just experiencing the joy of life, really enjoying, and nothing beats that. You know, I think nothing has more value than the joy of life. And that's what this show is about. You know, do you want to dance? Yes, you do. You know, and I'll, I'll help guide the way like a Sherpa, you know, sure. it's not only, you know, the show, but I've got the meetups, I've got the field trips. Um, all you have to do is uh, the just, 10 lesson dance challenge. Don't yes, forget that. I've got the 10 lesson dance challenge. And that's, you know, me being a Sherpa, it, a Sherpa is someone that helps climbers reach the summit right so i am your personal guide to get through the scary and dangerous mountains and i bring special guests too onto the show to kind of guide you along so this is what we're all about and um please come on by if you haven't we're doing swing every monday night in june 6 p.m at the ritz and the ritz is located at 3360 east flamingo road bring a friend to enter the raffle this month for a free lesson um, on June 25th, we've got a launch party. Yes. That's a big one. We're having it at the Encore Hotel at Andrea's. It starts at 7 p.m. That is going to be rock. fun. Thanks to Yvette Auger Brown. She's putting that on as part of her Cosmopolitan Connections event on uh, Wednesday, the 25th at 7 p.m. That is going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to that. Yes, please come. Everyone's invited. Uh, one last announcement. If you do like this show, share your love. You know, uh, share the post that you see on our Facebook page. And also feel free to review us on Yelp, Sophie and Sapphire in Las Vegas. Absolutely. And uh, is it all right if I give a shout out? Yeah. I want to give a shout out to somebody that I met at your meetup this past Monday night. Okay. William Mears. All right, new sponsor of the Do You Want to Dance yeah. radio show, uh, founder of Mears Venture Productions and creator of the MVP strategy. So uh, I'm sure we will hear more about that uh, in the days and weeks to come. Yeah. So that's awesome. Um, William Mears, Mears Venture Productions, and also uh, uh, an exciting participant of your dance meetup on Monday nights. And uh, we'll hear more about him a little bit later. Cool. Thanks for shouting out. Absolutely. So I think it's time to bring on our special guest. Oh, yes. NLP expert Don Elizabeth. She's here with us in the Do You Want to Dance studio. She is also a business coach and uh, author. Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. Author, speaker. Speaker. And uh, NLP practitioner. That's right. Oh, my goodness. And so, just, just an awesome human being all the way around. Welcome to the show, Don Elizabeth. <laughs> Thank you very much. Welcome, Don Elizabeth. So tell us a little bit more on what is NLP and what is an NLP practitioner? Well, NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming, which is basically how our brain is wired. It's the study of how we react and the emotions we have to different people, different situations, and how we communicate. And the way I love to use NLP is since we're already wired this way, how can we utilize that in our day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. to communicate with individuals better, to get through situations easier? And when you study NLP, there's different levels, and a practitioner is the level that I'm at, and it helps me so much in my life as well as all my clients' lives. Right. So you actually use this as a secret weapon to get what you want. Pretty much. Yeah. And will you be sharing tips with us? I will. Absolutely. I love sharing different tips on it. Cool. So you also um, have some dance experience, and we'll talk about that after the commercial break. But uh, what's cool is that Don Elizabeth has dance experience. She is an L NLP expert, and she's going to tie the two together right after our first commercial break. So will you stay with us? Absolutely. Great. We will see you soon. Feel free to get up and dance while we take a quick break for these commercial messages. Are you sick and tired of not seeing consistent growth in your business and feel like you're spinning your wheels no matter how hard you keep working? If you're ready to finally do something about it so you can start enjoying your life more, then listen up. My name is William Mears, and I'm the founder of Mears Venture Productions and creator of the popular MVP strategy. And I'm prepared to reveal three of my most powerful business acceleration strategies with you when you pick up the phone and call me. 
Together, we can create that magical growth you've been chasing after. So what are you waiting for? Give me a call, 1-800-411-6472. And let's take your business to a whole new level. From the very first lesson, Sophia was quick to adapt her teaching style to my learning style, and she exuded positive energy. Over time, I had occasion to see Sophia with other students and how different her lessons were with each student, depending on their needs. I never bought lessons in advance, so I never felt committed to taking lessons, but I've been coming back every week for two years. I now go out dancing with ease and even enjoy dancing with Sophia in exhibitions and show numbers. I consider Sophia a friend, in addition to being a truly unique and wonderful dance instructor. Hi, it's Sophia from Sophia in Sapphire, here with a personal invitation to join me at 6 p.m. each Monday night in June to learn the swing at the Ritz, located at 3360 East Flamingo Road for my How to Dance in Real Life Situations beginner class. Begin your journey from nerdy to flirty while you learn how to make dance more than just a one-time thing. For more information, please visit sophiainsapphire.com. Welcome back to Do You Wanna Dance? Once again, your host, Sophia in Sapphire. Sophia in Sapphire. Welcome back to the show, everybody. I'm your hostess, Sophia, and you're listening live to the Do You Wanna Dance radio show. Don't forget, you could find us on sophiainsapphire.com for past episodes and downloads. Also, if you would like to be invited to our special events, please like us on Facebook, Sophia in Sapphire. Today we're talking about how to get from nerdy to flirty using the secret weapon of NLP. So we are going to learn how to use the language of the mind to attain desired outcomes. In studio we have our special guest, Don Elizabeth. Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome, Don Elizabeth. So you are NLP practitioner, business coach, entrepreneur, author. Busy, uh, busy, 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 and also and dancer. Previous dancer. Yes. Now, now absolutely. you are originally a New York girl. Is that right? New York. New yes. York. Yes. If you were to say my name properly, it would be Dawn. Dawn. Yes. That's if you're on Long Island. Uh huh. Yeah. Or Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you grew up in where in New York? Upstate New York and Buffalo, New York. Buffalo, New York. Mm -hmm. Okay, so not really such a an accent from Buffalo. Apparently, we have our own accent. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so Buffalo, New York. And when did you start dancing? Oh, well, actually, I started dancing probably about when I could walk. Really? Yeah, my mom's favorite story about me is that people would not pay attention to me at our family gathering. We have an Italian family, huge. No mm -hmm. one would pay attention. So I got up and started dancing around on the table. Oh, <laughs> fancy. <laughs> yes. Okay, was there a pole involved? Or I don't know. I don't no, remember don't it. Remember. Uh -oh. okay. <laughs> I just know that she says that I wanted that attention and I started dancing around. So she thought she should sign me up. So that seems like probably the earliest form of NLP right there. You wanted attention and you realized, hey, I dance, I get attention. Absolutely. That's true. Awesome. So, I mean, then you, I mean, obviously went to, to classes and school and took instruction and had coaches and mm -hmm. learned how to dance. What types of dance did you do? I actually did all different types of dance, swing dancing, as well as oh, jazz cool. and tap and ballet. And as I got older, I did do some um, different partnering type of dance. Just everything. I enjoyed it all. It was a lot of fun. And you actually, I mean, you made some money doing this as a profession. I mean, you were a professional dancer uh, in, I mean, you know, teenage years. Is that right? Absolutely. I, uh, I would do different, um, like, corporate events, special events, store openings. I did dance with a few different companies. Um, it mainly was to pay for my dance supplies <laughs> yeah everything it was it kind of substituted yeah. so that I didn't, it didn't come out of pocket i would uh -huh. get jobs and keep taking more dance class go to new york city for dance and that's really cool that is yeah. cool. not everybody has that experience that's yeah. for sure so thanks mom for, uh, exactly. for making that happen and driving me everywhere the furthest she took me was down to florida we went and uh, i did dance in disney world so that was oh, fun so. man yes. how cool is that so and Shortly thereafter, picked up NLP, or tell us the story on that. 
Um, it was actually a little while later when I was younger, I did hurt my back. And so I had to find a new way. I couldn't oh, be a performer yeah. as much anymore. I couldn't keep up with it. And so I did start doing choreography and directing musicals and plays. And I just really loved that communication between mm -hmm. the actors and dancers and the audience. I had always loved that because it's a way to communicate with an audience in order to change somebody's emotion. What could you do? How could you perform right. to make that change in an audience? And I've always always been fascinated with it and after I moved to Las Vegas after graduating college I got into sales which was odd but I did mm -hmm. and I just started learning that it wasn't much different than being a dancer oh. how you had to communicate with people in order to get that emotion a right change within them cool so um where does NLP come into play well, I just started, um, for me, I started doing a lot of learning as a sales associate, just trying to learn how to talk to people better. I mean, I was used to dancing. You didn't yeah. talk to people, right? Exactly. <laughs> you know? And so I, uh, I just did a lot of studying on it. And my favorite thing about NLP is that it's already there within us. So many mm -hmm. things are from our subconscious that I just loved putting it into the conscious mind and I've gotten to the point where I just love teaching it to other people as well. Yeah and from what I understand you have a more practical everyday approach to NLP. I mean there's different levels of it where it goes really deep um, but you make it applicable for the everyday person. Yeah absolutely. A lot of the clients I work with are people who are entrepreneurs, companies, businesses, mm -hmm. teams within a company and so to make it practical so they can utilize it on a day-to-day -day basis with the people that you work with or you see yeah. or any relationships you have because there's always somebody that we come across that we just don't necessarily right. get along with. And so do tell, elaborate, <laughs> I want to know some of these tips. Um, well, a lot of times when I do talk about NLP, the place I like to start is kind of the personality, okay, yeah. which there's a lot of different ways to test out personalities and learn about personalities out there. And for me, I kind of combine them all and put them into just the compass, the north, south, mm -hmm. east and west. We can recognize that. And if you picture a compass just sitting in front of you in the north and the south, they're opposites. The east and west are opposites. So when we talk about the different personalities, you can see which ones are opposites. Okay, and let me just stop you really quick because I know um, some people are familiar with plenty of different personality mm -hmm. books and uh, approaches, but this is f uh, similar to Myers-Briggs, correct? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. As we as I talk about it and as we go through them, it'll, it'll be noticeable. You'll okay. probably know kind of, if you already are familiar with a certain type of uh, personality testing, you can kind of see the similarities. All Absolutely. Right. Let's hear it. So um, I like to say in the North is the person who's dominant because the North is on top. Uh -huh. the, they like to be in charge. They're very f um, short with their words and their yeah. phrases. No fluff. Uh -huh. They hate the fluff. And then <laughs> opposite that in the South would be somebody who's more of a supporter, or a team player, okay. somebody who wants to make sure everyone's getting along, mm -hmm. kind of like the, the mother or the, the parent of the group. Yeah. Um, and then in the East, we have the person who is the partier, loves to have fun. Oh, I why, know did you those. Look, why did you look Ow, right at me I when did. you said that? I'll stop it. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> He's in the Far East for sure. <laughs> loves to have a good time. You could always tell them in a party. You could yeah. see them in a second. Yeah. They're the ones that everybody wants to be friends with. And then opposite Lampshade of them, on my head, yeah. that kind of thing. <laughs> and then opposite of them in the West are the people who are very detail oriented, all mm -hmm. about process yeah. and knowing all facts before they can take that action. And um, I was kind of looking at it in a dance perspective right. earlier. And if you think about it, somebody in the North, they, they just they want to know all the steps, but they want you to just teach it to them. Just show yeah. me and let's get going. Let's do it. Yep. Exactly. Don't don't <laughs> stay on the same step. No fluff. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and opposite that. In that of the south would be somebody who wants to make sure their partner has everything that they need that yeah. they understand it that they're yeah. there and they have everything sometimes for a little them. too much exactly <laughs> <laughs> and once again you looked right at me when you said that <laughs> and uh somebody in the east that partier they just want to have fun they yeah, don't care if the steps matter. are right they're just matter. like let's party let's have a good time let's dance uh -huh. it up that's then, the, the Elaine Bennis, right? Yes, yeah, she exactly. Epitomizes the she East, doesn't right? care that she looks terrible. She just wants to dance. Yeah, that's yeah, party. That's yeah. And then opposite that is the person who wants to know everything about dance before they get on the dance floor. The specific steps, the history of it, yeah. where you learned it, why are we learning this step, this hand right, movement, exactly. and having that very specific piece to it. Yeah, so, you know what's so interesting is that this is exactly um, what I need to know about my students, and I pick up on it 
to be an effective teacher mm -hmm. and communicator. Yeah. Because uh, you could be an uh, expert at what you do or talented even, but if you can't communicate um, and if you don't know the learning style of yeah. who you're you know, talking to, it becomes a problem. Right. Absolutely. And you can tell because you were talking about the different personalities and you right. do study those and you do know those things. And that's huge when you're on the teaching side yeah. because you can be great at something, but to be able to teach it is completely the opposite for it. So tell us, uh, so now, now we know the compass. Mm -hmm. What are the tips to communicate with each other? Well, if you're with say your partner is somebody we'll say in the north that is mm -hmm. get to the point let's do it let's take those let's just do the steps and move on then you want to make sure you're communicating with them in that same way right even if that's not you yeah we need to be communicated with the way that the others need to be communicated with we always hear the treat people the way you want to be treated mm -hmm. it's not the same in communication it's the opposite yeah. you need to communicate with them the way they want to be communicated it's counterintuitive with. sometimes yes that makes it's a lot hard. of sense yeah it's um don't treat them the way you want to be treated, but treat them the way they want to be treated. Exactly. exactly. Ah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so you have to be careful because we always fall back into our own personality. As we were talking about them, you could probably recognize where you may feel mm -hmm. strongly. And that's how we like to communicate with people. But until we start communicating in other ways, it's not really going to match up. And we're going to have those problems with individuals, whether a dance partner or yeah. we're just starting to have a conversation with somebody. Hmm. Cool. And what about the other uh, personalities in regards to dancing? So if you have somebody who is all about in the South, who's all about making sure you're doing well, let them know how you're doing, how they've helped uh -huh. you, and really help them help you. And same thing if you're in the, as that person who loves to party, just have fun. Then let go. Let all your ambitions down and just have a good time because they're not judging you because they're probably being silly along the way anyway. So, and, yeah, and um, are these uh, different for women and men, would you say? Not too much. When it comes down to the core, not really. It's as we kind of move more to the surface, yes, a little uh -huh. bit. But most of it is just very specific with um, more that personality type because it's so unconscious within us and it's ingrained in us ever since we were a kid of how we were raised, how our ancestors were. It's just everything behind us and in that subconscious mind wow, deep history yeah well, things that we don't even back. realize it is there yeah. a way to access it do you access it as an nlp practitioner yeah the more you you study it the more you learn about different pieces you just start to bring them to your conscious mind and that's how you start to unravel it and learn about it is it's there it's just knowing that it's there you don't know what you mm. don't know and you help people do that absolutely oh i want some help <laughs> <laughs> That's why you invited her to be on the show. I mean, you know, we're bringing this help to, uh, you know, to our listeners. And, you know, she's going to be very helpful to, uh, to you as an instructor as well. All right. We have to segue into our second commercial messages. We will be right back after this short break. Feel free to get up and dance while we take a quick break for these commercial messages. Do You Want to Dance is brought to you by Sophia in Sapphire. Experience the bliss of dance, whether preparing for the first dance of the rest of your life as husband and wife, or gaining the confidence to enjoy the dance floor on date night. Sophia and her team of dance specialists will help you feel alive, reconnected, and invigorated through all types of dances. From beginners to advanced students, Sophia will help you experience the therapeutic, medicinal, and transformative benefits of dance. Get on the dance floor. Get in a game. Go from nerdy to flirty with Sophia in Sapphire. Listen to Do You Want to Dance Wednesdays at 4 p.m. on Vegas All Net Radio. And check out SophiaInSapphire.com for more information. Or give Sophia a call at 702-907-7002. That's SophiaInSapphire.com. And the Do You Want to Dance radio show Wednesdays at 4 p.m. on VegasAllNetRadio.com. 
Are you funny? Do you want to be funnier? Want more laughs from your speech, business presentation, or act? I'm Big Magic Al Jensen, and in addition to being a radio show host, I perform my comedy magic act on stages across Las Vegas and cruise ships around the world. I've consulted and coached humorous speech contest winners, stage performers, and business professionals who want to bring more humor to their conversations and presentations. I can do the same for you with my program, Funny Just Got Easier. One-on-one -on -one coaching, group classes, and workshops are available. Whether you want to be funnier in front of an audience or just in conversation, Funny Just Got Easier is the simple and quick way to kick up your humor. Check out funnyjustgoteasier.com for more information on personal coaching and workshop dates. That's funnyjustgoteasier.com. Planning a wedding? Want a spectacular, one-of-a-kind reception party experience? All Events Production is ready to make your event a unique production. From DJ and music to photo booth and even lighting, they will keep your guests engaged and entertained from beginning to end. Your wedding is transformed into a truly wow event. From live broadcasting for those who can't be there in person to live texting, dancing in the clouds, snow, and all sorts of special effects. Your special day will truly be one of a kind. Contact All Events Production at 702-348-6641 or visit them online at alleventsproduction.com. That's 702-348-6641 or alleventsproduction.com. Tune in Wednesdays at 4 p.m. for Do You Wanna Dance? The show that helps you realize how simple it is to go from wallflower dreamer to confident center of the stage dancer. Whether it's the first dance as husband and wife or another option for date night, Sophia in Sapphire will help jumpstart your dancing journey and transform your experience into a personal expression of what makes you, you. Tune in Wednesdays at 4 p.m. to Vegas All Night Radio and let me help you. You go from nerdy to flirty and learn how simple it is to turn your dreams into reality on the Do You Want to Dance radio show. Welcome back to Do You Want to Dance. Once again, your host, Sophia in Sapphire. Sophia in Sapphire. Welcome back to the show, everybody. I'm your hostess, Sophia, and you're listening live to the Do You Want to Dance radio show. Don't forget, you could find us on sophiainsapphire.com for past episodes and downloads. Also, if you'd like to be invited to Sophia in Sapphire events, please like us on Facebook. Today, we are talking about how to get from nerdy to flirty using the secret weapon of NLP. How to use the language of the mind to attain desired outcomes. In studio guest today is NLP practitioner Dawn Elizabeth. She's here with us. Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. Great to have you with us today, Dawn. Now, I've got a quick question for you. Okay. You know, on occasion, like uh, on the weekends, I like to go out and uh, party a little bit. And... <laughs> I want to pick your brain here for a moment. Let's just say that I'm going out into a social dancing situation at one of the, uh, the, the nightclubs that have like live music and I can dance the swing or I can dance the cha-cha or the salsa just because I like to dance salsa. So if I want to have the best opportunity to get a positive response from somebody that I might like to dance with, can you give me any like secret insider tips on maybe how to get that beautiful, gorgeous woman to say, yeah, I want to dance with you because I don't have the greatest track record. I get turned down oh, probably no. more, often, more often than I get accepted. Oh, so I'm looking to, looking to up my average a little bit here. Is there <laughs> any, you know, any tips you can give me on how I can elicit a, a positive response from uh, potential dance partners? Uh, yeah. The main thing whenever you're approaching anybody is to show that confidence behind you and learning any part of NLP and also the body language, like you guys said, you're going to have the body language expert. Learning all these gives you that confidence for when you do go and approach an individual. And the main thing when you approach somebody else is make the conversation all about them. 
Oh, okay. So it's not all about me. No. That's right. That's why I'm giving you this tip. Okay. <laughs> personalizing, this is a good one. personalizing the instruction just for yes. me. Yes. Yeah, make it about them. Ask them about th themselves. Ask them questions. Talk about them. Compliment them. A compliment ah. can go a long way. Also, if you are feeling nervous or you're armpits are sweating or your yes, you yes, know your yes. shirt's buttoned incorrectly yes that's okay that's me joke about it on yourself and then compliment it about them so if say for example you're sweating like crazy make a joke about it laugh at yourself so i'm sweating like crazy but you look fresh as a daisy there oh. you go <laughs> <laughs> yeah joke about yourself let them joke with you let them giggle let them laugh and then give them a compliment okay so that it turns back onto them but at least this way you're pointing out the part that you're not so confident about and the other person will stop thinking about that as well oh, okay. it puts them at ease probably absolutely because now they're not sitting there staring at what's making what's more obvious if maybe your voice is cracking, all they're doing is listening to your voice crack. They don't hear what you say. Mm. Make a joke about a crack in your voice and then turn it back it and give away. them a compliment. You know, that's interesting. One thing I do sometimes, you know, if I I'll have a nervous student, um, I do something funky or something that just doesn't look too cool, like a movement or mm -hmm. a dorky something, or I'll say something nerdy or yeah. something. And then they're like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm cooler than that, you know, and then they exactly. feel a little cooler and then, you know, exactly, it, it works. I want to point out that while you are seeking help with NLP, you are actually already using NLP. Yes. Because this last Monday night, I know that during the dance instruction, after we would get through with a little segment, because you'd teach it in pieces. Okay, now you got this little part down. Give your partner a high five. Give them a compliment. Tell them something that they did awesome. So uh -huh. that was an excellent uh, instructional technique from my perspective. Yeah, well, it, it, the energy all of a sudden gets, you know, bigger and brighter in the room. Sure. And also, too, that is an NLP technique um, where you're connecting a sound or an action to a positive. Yeah. So whenever they hear that sound or action again, without you saying the positive, they automatically think that. So that gives them more confidence without you needing to continue to say it. I do that a lot with my seminars, turn to somebody and give them a high five and say, you are great. So then mm -hmm. the next time I say, turn to your partner, give them a high five, they're automatically subconsciously yeah. thinking you are great. So that is brain. NLP pieces that you're already implementing. So I know uh, language is a big part of how we communicate. Are there certain like on a first impression or, you know, the moment of truth, you know, <laughs> when you meet someone for the first time in the first few seconds, are there key words or phrases um, to use? I, I know you said um, you gave a good tip about um, uh, refocusing, mm -hmm, you know, and making, about yeah. Um, but what about words or phrases? Well, if you're asking somebody a question about dancing, if they did want to get up and dance, a great way to start any question like that is, would you, as opposed to, do you want to, or can I have this dance? Start with, would you, because that actually already opens our mind to say yes. Mm. Could you? Eh, I could. So would you like to dance? Would you like to dance? Would that be inappropriate? Absolutely. Ah, I like that. It already opens our mind, and a lot of times when we hear the phrase, would you, our mind is already set to say yes. We're already prompt to say, yes, I would like to do that. And so utilizing that phrase can really help you keep that confidence of somebody saying yes to you. I've used that phrase before, and before I even finish the sentence, people are like, yeah, sure, no problem. And I could add anything, you know. <laughs> would you like to yes. loan me a million dollars? Oh, okay, wow. exactly. Okay. Yeah, it opens our mind up to a more positive. How about, so this is about, you know, ask, asking someone, being a little bit more uh, forward. What about if you want to get someone to ask you or, you know, approach you? Is there a certain demeanor or character or things that you could say to show that, you know, you might be interested or a, a good candidate for a dance partner? <laughs> when you're in a conversation with somebody, questions is huge. Uh -huh. And a way you can utilize questions to move a, a, f move a conversation in the direction you want. Even though you're asking questions, it sounds mm -hmm. like you're leaving mm -hmm. it up to the other person, yeah. making it about them. But you ask in certain ways so that you're going towards the path you want, to the goal that you want. Um, one type of question that I love utilizing is the Columbo approach. It makes it sound as though Colombo approach is more like you don't really know the answers, 
but you do. You just want the other person to answer for you. you want them to verbalize it. Yes. Right? So questioning with n kind of that unsurety behind it of the, I don't know the answer, so you need to help me. And if you utilize those kind of questions. Can, you, can, yes, you, give us so, an, can you give us well, an example? In, in dance, a good one could be, um, oh, I don't really know this song. Have you ever danced to this song before? And if the person says yes, you can start asking more questions about that. Would it be okay if you showed me some steps to this? Oh, I like that. <laughs> and now they are wanting to show you. They're the expert. They're the one who knows, and they want to teach it to you. So there's ways to... Until they find out you are lying. <laughs> <laughs> So those but are by then it's too to, late. Uh, you know, exactly. By then it's, we, we've accomplished what we want to accomplish. At that point, they're just going to compliment you. Of, oh, you know this. You're really good at this. <laughs> I am. Wow. Thank you. Oh, no. Sneaky, <laughs> sneaky, sneaky. All right. Well, Don Elizabeth, so if people wanted to find more about you and what you do, where do they find you? You can find me on my website, DawnElizabeth.com, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, all of it. When you do spell my name, it's D A W N E L Y Z A B E T H. Mm -hmm. And if they do come to your website, what will they find there? Um, just different information about communication, as well as the different different pieces that I do when I talk with my clients and how I help different people. So kind of in a blog format to find out some more information on communicating. So, so I know you're a speaker. Do you have events that you hold um, or anything somebody can sign up for? I don't have any um, events for the current coming up currently that okay. are public. However, on the website, there is a place to contact me and ask for more information on it. And then I can give more information on how I can help each individual so you cool. work with a lot of corporations doing mm -hmm. uh, in-house training and things like that yes all right i understand also that you have uh, a little bit of background in humor is that right i do tell us just a little bit about your background in humor i've learned how to be funny <laughs> 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 that's my background no um i as i was doing more speaking and um, trainings i realized i wasn't very fun. I'm in that north direction, so I'm very get to the point, and I need to learn to be that partier, that excitement need person. need to move a little to the east, is yes. what you're saying. Yes, so I do teach now. I also help people with how to add humor into their lives. Really? Well, I want to hear a little bit. What's the name of that website? <laughs> <laughs> Acresofhumor.com. Or funnyjustgoteasier.com. Yes. That one too, huh? Yes. That's awesome. So you are an author. I know that you've done an ebook, uh, The Seven Seconds to a Good First Impression. Yes. And you are an entrepreneur. You have a not-for-profit organization here mm -hmm. in, in Las Vegas. Vegas that helps uh, helps other not-for-profit organizations coordinate resources. Mm -hmm. So uh, when do you sleep? Um, I think I'm sleeping right now. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. So I don't think I do. You are just a very dynamic individual, and we have learned a lot about uh, language and how NLP can help us in the uh, in the dance world. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. We have to segue into our next commercial messages, and we will be right back after this short break. Feel free to get up and dance while we take a quick break for these commercial messages. When marimba rhythms start to play, dance with me, make me sway. Are you funny? Do you want to be funnier? Want more laughs from your speech, business presentation, or act? I'm Big Magic Al Jensen, and in addition to being a radio show host, I perform my comedy magic act on stages across Las Vegas and cruise ships around the world. I've consulted and coached humorous speech contest winners, stage performers, and business professionals who want to bring more humor to their conversations and presentations. I can do the same for you with my program, Funny Just Got Easier. One-on-one -on -one coaching, group classes, and workshops are available. Whether you want to be funnier in front of an audience or just in conversation, Funny Just Got Easier is the simple and quick way to kick up your humor. Check out funnyjustgoteasier.com for more information on personal coaching and workshop dates. That's funnyjustgoteasier.com. 
Are you looking for an all-inclusive, stress-free wedding venue? One with all the services to plan your perfect wedding. If so, you're looking for the Ritz of Las Vegas, family-owned and operated for more than 10 years. In addition to traditional events, the Ritz specializes in theme weddings from 1920s, glam goth, Star Wars, Harry Potter, masquerade, burlesque, or vintage Hollywood, just to name a few. Whatever your vision, the Ritz makes it a reality. For more information on the finest all-inclusive, stress-free wedding venue in Las Vegas, contact the Ritz of Las Vegas at 702-336-3626 or visit them at the Ritz of Las Vegas.com. That's 702-336-3626 or the Ritz of Las Vegas.com. Hi Sophia, this is Anne, and I'm calling because my husband surprised me with dance lessons at Sophia in Sapphire. And we had a marvelous time. I never in a million years thought that I would be able to salsa. I can't believe that Jim was in for it, and we both had so much fun. Since then, we have been going out on dates just so we can salsa, and it's really changed our world. So thanks again, Sophia. We had a lot of fun. You're a very patient teacher, and I can't wait to take the next lesson. Hi, it's Sophia from Sophia in Sapphire, here with a personal invitation to join me at 6 p.m. each Monday night in June to learn the swing at the Ritz, located at 3360 East Flamingo Road for my How to Dance in Real Life Situations beginner class. Begin your journey from nerdy to flirty while you learn how to make dance more than just a one-time thing. For more information, please visit sophiainsapphire.com. Welcome back to Do You Wanna Dance? Once again, your host, Sophia in Sapphire. Sophia in Sapphire. Welcome back to the show, everybody. I'm your host, Sophia, and you're listening live to Would You Like to Dance Radio. <laughs> I like that. You're taking the NLP idea and putting it into practice right now. That's awesome. That's right. Don't forget, you could find us online, sophiainsapphire.com, for past episodes and downloads. If you'd like to be invited to future events, please find us on Facebook. I'd like to give a shout-out today to our sponsor. His name is William Mears, founder of Mears Venture Productions and creator of the popular MVP strategy, that consists of powerful business acceleration strategies to create the magical growth you've been chasing after. So you can give him a call at 1-800-411-6472 and take your business to a whole new level. Awesome, and so many people need that. I think, I think everybody needs it, even if you think you got it down. There's always uh, the there's heavens. Another, there's another level. There's a heavens to ascend Unless to. Unless you're Microsoft, there is another level. <laughs> if you know what another I mean. Another level of Microsoft is Mac. The, well, <laughs> okay, I suppose. I suppose. So today we had tons of good information about how to get from nerdy to flirty. I think, Al, you can um, use some of those techniques. Yes, I can, and yes, I will. Would you? I would. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would. I would be delighted to use some of those techniques. <laughs> and I will do so this weekend as I have a lampshade on my head utilizing my eastern, uh, you know, compass point personality and, uh, you know, hopefully improve my average. Now, you know, we talked with your brother a couple of weeks ago. In fact, we're going to air uh, one of his segments here in the near future, I'm mm -hmm. sure. But your brother, he has really mastered uh, I mean, he's got a good average when it comes to getting ladies to say yes to him when That's it comes to right. dancing. So, uh, I mean, he's a master, and we'll look for that interview from him in the very near future. Very cool. Yeah, one of the things uh, he said was, you know, you, you invite, you know, w would you like, you know, you, you give the hand, and if, if they don't resist, you just kind of encourage them to come and walk onto the dance floor instead of interrogating them, asking them who they are, you know. Exactly. And um, <clears throat> so that's really cool. And uh, one thing I, I really love what we talked about, you know, the compass and the four different uh, personalities, because um, one thing I need to stress is that when we learn these things, all of it is counterintuitive. That is why it's so hard to change our habits and to implement new good ones and to, you know, start living a different way because nothing is natural in the beginning. We seem to always 
speak, you know, and ask and invite and talk in a way um, that we think is effective. But we only know one fourth of the personalities because we can only belong to one uh, one part of we the. We can compass. only relate to one of those. Absolutely, that's right. And Dawn, I think, made a very good point. You need to kind of understand where the other person's coming from, and don't treat the other person how you want to be treated. Treat the other person how they want to be treated. Yeah. So the key here is to figure out what that person is. Right. Determine their personality type and and uh, take some NLP training. Yeah. from an NLP practitioner, read about it, uh, study about it, and understand that because I think that uh, will be a key to improving my percentages, my success uh, in the dance clubs. Yeah, you know, well, uh, aside from just dance or being successful in business or life with NLP, I think to enjoy life, you have to know these things. I remember first being uh, getting acquainted with NLP um, in the library as a teenager. And I was in high school and I would like hang out at the library reading these books on personalities because I was just so fascinated about human nature. You know, I would observe, I would see what works, what doesn't. And I had a lot of experiences of what didn't work. So I was very eager to figure out how to connect effectively with people, how to have healthy relationships and a healthy lifestyle that just emanates joy. And that's why I want to share it with everyone because it's so important, you know. And that's why you've kind of set the theme for this month as uh, the psychology or the psychological aspect of dance. That's right. You know, it's something we don't really talk about in casual conversation. But once you understand it, I mean, it, it really makes sense. It's it, powerful. Yeah, it, it really is powerful. And I have learned that you know you can't just be narcissistic and, and be a leader all the time. It's important to pay attention to what your partner, uh, either your conversation partner, That's your right. business partner, your That's dance right. partner, anybody that you're trying to work with, you've got to be open to reading their signals, both verbal right. and, uh, and physical cues. And being open to being equal. Absolutely. That's very important because yep. it's a give and take. Absolutely it is. So thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in for today's show. Do you want to dance? Uh, find us here next week, same time, same place, and uh, visit the archives on sophiaandsapphire.com. Ciao, ciao. Thanks for listening to Do You Want to Dance? Tune in again next week for more interviews, advice, and insight into how you could go from nerdy to flirty and learn how simple it is to turn your dreams into reality. Reality. On the Do You Want to Dance radio show, Wednesdays at 4 p.m., right here on Vegas, all at radio.com. These and opinions expressed on this program were those of the hosts and guests and did not necessarily reflect those of Vegas All Net Radio, its affiliates, or its parent company.